Hi, been here with Amtex Equipment, bringing you a new video that we can add to our archive of uh, Amtex Equipment Repair Shop Online. Now, we're going to be uh, um, posting more videos, timeline, because we have picked up so much popularity, thanks to everyone out there, that it's kind of hard for us to find the time to be able to show you some of the repairs that you can do yourself uh, without any need of repair shop out there. But however, we will post all type of videos to show you to work on your machine in any kind of detail that you desire. Now, if we, if you look at one of, some of our machines, the way we design them, if you notice, everything is mounted outside. Why? Because we don't want you to go through the trouble of changing, spending so much time and hardship to remove something. Now, today we're going to start off teaching you uh, what a pump is consist of. For, uh, we're going to be teaching you how to do the repair of the um, repair of the pump but I decided to teach you first how a pump operates because if I teach you just how to repair things then you might not be able to go to a job with confidence that uh, if something even goes wrong if something is not malfunctioning you don't even know where to start but if you learn uh, how a part works and what it takes to a, for a part to work you'll be able to pinpoint your troubles easy and fast now our machine, if you notice, everything is mounted outside. Let's just, today we're going to be talking about the pump. If you notice, the pump system is faces outside. So now, the only part in the back that you need to be concerned about is going to be the oil check, which is very reachable. Now, coming back to the table, if you notice, we have set up the same pump for you. Now, what we're going to do, first we're going to show you, we're going to go ahead and take the head of the pump off, show you how the pump works. How, what does it make for a pump to create pressure? Of course, later, we're going get to get into the other models of pump that we use, which is a duplex one right here, the Hypro 2200 series, and of course, the piston pump. But by showing you this pump, which is much larger than this, it pretty much gives you an idea how to fix and how to study the smaller one. Because after all, the smaller pump, it is a smaller version of this big pump. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and remove the head of the pump. The head of the pump is an area with, it gets damaged, not easy, but it is vulnerable to damage compared to the areas like the heat exchanger, piping system, hoses and what have you. So, but later on I will uh, post several videos showing you what type of tooling you're going to need to remove seals that may cause um, oil leak, water leak, loss of pressure, pulsation, all kind of um, areas that issues that might come up. But for now, again, like I said, we're going to show you and teach you how a pump operates. It don't matter which pump it is. High pro, uh, cat pumps, generals, name it. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly remove the head of the pump by using a 316 Allen wrench socket. I know you might not be able to have this system I have because after all, uh, we do build machines daily for our living. So you can always even use the Allen wrench to remove the head. So in order to make the matter fast, I'm going to go ahead and just remove those sockets. But first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and remove my injector head by using a one and one quarter wrench by simply loosening that ring you'll be able to remove the injector head, you put it away now we're going to go ahead and take the um, six hex bol uh, head uh, bolts that they hold the head in place make sure that you enter the uh, uh, tool in there Okay. I'm going to go to the next one, it takes up. Make sure you organize when you take everything out, just throw them all, do not throw them all over the place. All right. So right there. Again, like I said, make sure you insert the tool into the box so you'll be able to grab the whole entire head. Now that I have loosened all my six hex head bolts, I'm going to go ahead and pull the head off. Very simple. In order to pull the head out, you don't just yank it out. You kind of wobble it up and down, and as you're moving it up and down, you start pulling it out. Now, as the head wants to come out, you notice you're packing and your returner cuffs wants to 
get out. So what you're gonna do, you can always use any sharp edge object, a screwdriver, just put them, push them back in. I'm gonna go ahead and remove, remove it out. Now this is the part that we're gonna work on later, but we're not gonna get into it because just to repair this part will require a good five videos. We're gonna put this baby away. What makes a pump pressurized? Right. If you notice, we're gonna go back to the machine. The pump is facing outside. And the pump is drive by a belt. But you notice the, the pulley on the engine, it is a AK-30 by H, which takes a H bushing of one, one and a one, uh, one and one quarter, which is the shaft of the engine. But the diameter of that pulley is three inches. And the pulley that's inside of this cover, protection cover, which is here, it is AK-61 by three quarter, which is almost six inches in diameter. Why? Because if you notice right here, it tells you the maximum RPM, 1725. That means this is the fastest you can turn, run this pump. Any, any faster speed, you will cause overheating of the crankshaft, which is gonna cause uh, consumption of oil, which eventually is gonna seize up. Now, if you notice, right, in, in the R engines, they run at 3,000, 3,100, whatever RPM. That means by having a three inch pulley on our engine, which drives our pump, per every turn that our engine does, pump will do half a turn. So if we are running the engine at um, 3,000 RPM, we're running the pump at what? 1,500 RPM, which is about 225 RPM below its max speed. That means we're safe. So if you have a system that has a small pulley on its engine, and it's got a small pulley on its pump, you may want to reconsider changing the pulley on your pump to a larger one, which you're not going to see uh, in any of the uh, today's market well-known brands because that that area is extremely critical now going back to the um, pump how a pump runs of course as the engine turns it turns your pulley and if you notice know these are called plungers and they do in order they either stroke back in and out so how do we get pressure very simple as they're going into this packing here and get sealed by this seal area per every movement that they do back water enters and now we're gonna go to the check valve that makes it happen come here put this to the side these are your check valves which you're gonna have one of each in here If we go ahead and put this back up, just kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Which later on, we're going to get to this part. If I take this top cap off, you're going to have one of these sitting in this position. You have another one right here. And of course, you're going to have another one, another check valve here. Now, you do have another uh, three check valve down here in this position. In other words, if I go ahead and take this off, you'll be able to see a check valve in this position. So really looking at it, you're going to have tri triple set of two check valves, one running this way, one running this way. So what is a check valve? What this does? The word check valves means checking the flow. So if I look at this, if you come closer, and if I use any kind of object, and I push the plate forward, it only allows the plate to go one way. It can't go further out this way. So this means, now going back to the drawing board, If I kind of sketch the head of the pump, we're looking at it from the side. This is, this is your pump. And of course, here's going to be your pulley. Now as he rotates, remember, coming back this way. As it rotates, it moves these plungers in and out in order, not randomly. Not going back here. Remember we had a check valve in this position and a check valve in this position. So as the plunger pulls back, water enters. As the plunger pushes forward, 
water passes through the check valve, goes through the upper check valve, out into the line to go into the heater. Now, since the water cannot come back in, and this thing is done, each of these units right here, for every rotation, if you look, it does a full stroke. That means each one of these moves 1500 times per minute in and out. So, as the water gets plunged in and thrust forward, it's gonna pass through the first check valve, which is down here, and then shoots off into the upper chamber, going to the line, to go into the heater. Now, because this is all done in order, back and forth, there is no way for the water to back up into the pump. That's what you call a positive displacement pump. In other words, as this thing is done in a fast speed, you, one pulls the water in, one shoots it out. As the other one that just shoots the water out pulls back in to get the more water in, the other plunger shoots more water into the line. That's why you feel the vibration inside of your hoses, which is known to be pressure. Now, of course, as you increase the pressure, water gets more compacted into the, into the line, which you're gonna see on your gauge, 500 PSI, 1000 PSI, and what have you. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the story short here, because next what we're gonna do, we're gonna get into the pump and show you different symptoms. If you have an oil leak, what to look for. If you have a pressure, lost the pressure, what to look for and what to change. You have vibration, you have oil and water mixing and what have you. That's why I went ahead and I kind of posted one of the, um, the, the, one of the uh, uh, breakdown of the pump in here, but don't let this, don't let this um, uh, drawing scares you. Because when the, the, if the pump needs to be, any, if it needs any kind of repairs, you don't need to have the knowledge of replacing all of these. You know, just to make an example, if your oil and water in a back casing uh, gets mixed up and you need to kind of fix that so you don't have water from the head to go into the back uh, crankshaft casing, all you're going to have to replace is number 13, 14, and number 11. Everything else can stay same. Now I want to say goodbye. And of course, I will see you in other videos that I'm gonna post back to back uh, showing you how to repair your pump. Until then, we we'll see each other, thank you.